Hey, good morning, you guys. It's 7 a.m. Coffee with Shanda. I'm in my car, so I'm not going to look at you. I should have called this Car Talks. Do you know that I almost called... <coughs> oh, my goodness. Coffee with Shanda Car Talks. <coughs> Excuse me. I almost called Coffee with Shanda Car Talks when I first was coming up with the concept to do 7 a.m. Coffees with Shanda. So I'm heading to Lofty Coffee, my favorite place, and I just want to say thank you to all the people who have sent me gifts at Coffee with Shand or sent me gifts at Lofty Coffee. I walk into Lofty Coffee at, in Solana Beach and like last week there were there were gifts twice when I walked in from people that got me gift certificates and then um, somebody sent me a present there and it was just really really sweet. So I just want to say thank you for just being so um, sweet and amazing and let's talk about the fact that you can't you can't, today you can't say I can't. Like you gotta, you gotta stop stopping it. I can't. So, um, you know, you are without a doubt going to let yourself down and other people are going to let yourself down. It happens. Right. And one of the things I could share with you is that like last night I usually sleep really well. I'm like out cold and last night I, I went to bed really early and then, um, and then I woke up at about 1130 and then I started thinking about, believe it or not, like all of our ad spend on social media, effectiveness of campaigns, and my brain just started to go. And whenever I'm trying to figure something out, like we've got a couple, we have a new, a new campaign that we're doing right now online. And I'm trying to figure it out. And as I'm trying to figure it out, it, if I wake up, I could start thinking about it. And that's what happened. And then, of course, I did what you should never do. And I opened up my phone. And then before I know it, it's 3.30 in the morning, right? And I'm like, Ugh, you know. And so I was going to go work out at seven, 6 o'clock this morning. And I didn't. I decided to stay in bed. And that's why my hair, my, I'm wearing a hardcore business hat and I'm rolling to lofty coffee and I'm not having caffeine, caffeine because by the way, I've had 17 days of no caffeine and no, uh, no wine, which I thought would be a lot harder than it is because I was definitely loving my wine and my caffeine. But, um, but with all that being said, I opted not to go to 6 a.m. on my 6 a.m. workout so that I can get some sleep. And I chose sleep over, over working out. Now that doesn't mean that I can't work out today. It doesn't mean that I skip my agenda. It just means that I have to pay for it somewhere else. There's a show that I'm going to watch at 6 uh, PM Pacific standard time, um, tonight, uh, called the truth about cancer. I'm going to, I actually posted it. I think I posted it on my wall. Um, you can actually find it on Facebook if you're watching, if you're on Facebook, you can, uh, you can do in the search, search bar. They're doing seven, seven different countries, um, around the truth about cancer. And I'm going to watch it because I'm always educating myself on health. And so I can't work out at that time. And I'm working, I basically work today all the way until three, like I'm basically back to back. Um, and then I'm going to watch that movie. And so I'm going to have to work out after that or somehow work out, but I, I'm rescheduling that. So it screws me up because of the fact that I set my schedule for today, yesterday. So I always set my schedule the night before. And so that screws me up and I've got to get uncomfortable somewhere else to make it happen. And so I share this with you because I often see people stop. They, they get thrown off, their life throws them off, and then they stop. And here's what I want to tell you. You're never going to grow the business that you want unless, and I'm sorry to re read the riot act, but I could be really sweet and tell you it's all in the flow and this, that, and the other. And I'm going to say, no, freedom is freaking amazing. It's amazing to have freedom. It really is. But with that being said, freedom came with a cost. It came with a cost. You always have a cost. You either have a cost of not doing the thing that you want to do right now, or you have a cost that you're going to pay to get there. And so there's, you're never going to get out of the cost. And so if you're in any of this conversation that you somehow think that it should be easier or it should look different, first of all, check your alignment. At the end of the day, I don't believe that everybody is made to be an entrepreneur. I do believe that people are going to be forced into entrepreneurship coming up here soon, but I don't believe that everybody is meant to be an entrepreneur. And, um, and I just want to have you question yourself. 
like, do you have an absolute desire to grow a business and it's a calling and it has to be yours or do you have to be a part of a bigger mission? And you should start asking yourself this question because if you keep backing down, if you keep backing down, first of all, don't apply p- apply to work for my company if you keep backing down even in your own business. If you find your alignment is to be a part of another mission that is in alignment with you, is in complete alignment with you, there is nothing to feel shameful about that. To be really honest, I don't give a shit what it is that I do as far as if it's my company or it's not. It's just I've already built hardcore and I've done the work to build hardcore. So I would be an entrepreneur in any great movement, if that makes sense. Like if you were to roll me into another company that was up to what I'm doing on a bigger scale and it made sense, I would I would do that. Because as long as I had autonomy to actually go and build and have a voice, it would make sense to me. And so I share this with you because so many people are in this conversation of like, they want to be entrepreneurs, but they don't, but they don't actually want to work or when things are hard, like you can't figure out how to, how to sell something. And you're like, ah, I can't figure out how to sell this. This, this, this stuff is too hard. I'm like, you, you, you've got to correct your mind because whether you want to be a top executive in a company and be a part of a bigger movement that's already gotten going and that's in alignment or whether or not, or whether or not you want to start your own or you have your own right now, you really have to assess this conversation inside your head. And I really debated talking about this this morning because I think people would love me to be really sweet and, and be really like, um, tell you that it doesn't take hard work. And yes, I did take five and a half months off last year and I've been doing that for the last four years. But <clears throat> the truth is, is I work way harder than most people ever work. I mean, I really do. When I'm working, the fridge is not a distraction. When I'm working, my husband is not a distraction. When I'm working, my child is not a distraction. I have done the hard things like when I had no money invested in things I couldn't afford. Um, I, when I was afraid to hire people to help my life grow, even with money, was afraid to hire people to help my life grow. Like um, a house manager or... Um, gardeners. I don't know why gardeners were such a hard thing for me to hire, but it was like, almost like somehow there was a part of me that thought that maybe the house manager could do it. You know what I mean? It's like, you, you just look at, you just look at all these areas that you think that you can't, or you're afraid and you got to step up to them. So here's the deal. These thoughts are either going to control your destiny or you're going to step up to them, but you're never going to get out of the cost. There's going to be a cost no matter what. So I invite you today to look at, to really assess where you're at, like really assess where you're at. What is it that you're, that you're doing right now in your life? And is it in alignment with you? Like I said, like if I, if there was a a movement doing what I cared about and I could be a part of it, I would totally be a part of it. Like I, I definitely am an entrepreneur, but I'm actually a great entrepreneur as well. Like I, I, I love is I actually love the less hats I can wear, the better. I never enjoyed growing a company and wearing multiple hats. I never enjoyed that. Um, but I did it because I needed to do it to be able to create what I created um, inside of Hardcore. And I, I just think it's important for us to assess this because I keep seeing people who are not entrepreneurs. They're complaining They're complaining about they don't know how to sell. They're complaining that they don't have enough leads. If you don't have enough leads, come talk to me. Send me a direct inbox message. I'll show you how to have more leads than you can handle. In fact, if you don't know how to close or you don't know how to walk people through a conversation to yes, then I could show you how to do that too. Send Send me a message or comment on the thread below. Say, Shanda, I need your help and I'll help you. But you can't complain about it because the learning curve to get there I don't care who you are. I woke up at 11 p.m. last night. I know some of you guys go to bed at 11 p.m., but I go to sleep at like 8.30, okay? So at 11 p.m., 11.30 p.m., I woke up and I was up till 3.30 in the morning thinking about, you know what I mean? Not in the state of overwhelm, but in the state of concern, in the state of pressure, in the state of trying to figure it out, you know, like, and, and I was up till, you know, over th- past three o'clock this morning. 
and I gave up my workout because of it. And so I'm going to do my workout inconveniently today. And I share this with you because like, I'm no different than you. I'm no different. But the scenario is, is that I'm making it and hopefully you are too. I know you are if you're watching this, you're, you're, you're on your path and you're, you're working towards it. But I'm telling you, it doesn't have to be miserable. It doesn't have to be miserable. You can actually do it with an attitude. I was going to say an attitude of gratitude, but there was a time in my life I couldn't hear that. Right. And so it's like, but, but I will say gratitude. Like I was steaming. I I have this, I, I am really proud that I have this amazing house that was amazing for me. Right. There's other people have an even more amazing house, but for me, I really love my house. It hugs me. It has everything that I love in it. It hugs me. And I have a steam shower. I've always wanted a steam shower in my house. Anybody else want a steam shower in your house? I always wanted a steam shower in my house. And I was in my steam shower last night. And in my steam shower, I can see the ocean. Of course, not until it, when it's steamed up, I can't see the ocean. But I could see the sun coming through the steam on my window and the ocean through that and the sun like blurred through and I was watching all the little water particles on the on the window and it just took my breath away and I just said thank you God thank you for standing next to me through all of the crazy moments that I've had as an entrepreneur and thank you for blessing me with what I have today and the difference that I get to make and thank you for making me strong strong emotionally emotionally, strong physically, um, strong mentally, strong in my wisdom with online marketing. Thank you for making me strong. And I just had this huge moment of gratitude. And then I get out of the steam shower and I'm looking online and looking for some things that we're doing online and checking some campaigns out. This is after my steam shower yesterday. And I see this review of this person who basically, um, Like I saw it last week as well. This like, it's like the glaring review. That's horrible. Right. And it's like all these amazing reviews on our Facebook, our Facebook page and people just saying the most amazing things in the results. And then I see this review again of this person saying that I'm a scam artist and all this stuff. And there's like a part of me that like, like last week I actually said something back to this person. And then I went to our team and I asked them if they, if we delivered and we did deliver Then I go down and I see this other horrible review, like with this person, like saying like, I'm like a cult leader and stuff. And I'm like, wow, like, ouch. And then I almost went to respond. And then I was like, no, I'm not going to respond because it's time that we look for the people that want to work with us and really give our energy and our love towards them. You know what I mean? Like, I know when I put my head down that I'm not a horrible person or a cult leader. I mean, I read scripture. I'm not a cult leader, Uh, you know, like just crazy stuff like that. But it's like, it's like, I'll drink your Kool-Aid, Shanda. (laughs) Thank, Thank you. But it's like the crazy things that people write that damage your reputation. And what's sad is that somebody will not hire me because they'll see that. But I can't think like that. And you can't either. And so when you're looking at, you know, pursuing your career, when you're looking at pushing your business forward, the bigger you get, the thicker your skin's got to be. But I also got to tell you that if you're in alignment, like, like I said, like, you know, we're going into, uh, we're going into a world right now where people will be forced into entrepreneurship and I'm going to be hiring like crazy. Like I'm going to go completely against like the whole robotic thing as much as I can and hire like people, like real people. Cause I think human connection is, is currency, but saying that there's going to be a lot of people who are going to push, be pushed into entrepreneurship and they're not entrepreneurs and you're going to have to hire them. Right. And my hope for you is that you become so generous that you don't mind investing in them, that you take out lines of credit to invest in them and that you know how to make money. And then I also put an anointing on you that if you know that you're not an entrepreneur and you don't want to wear all the hats, like, honestly, I probably like, I probably, I, I, it's like, I, I just, I didn't love, I didn't love growing the company. I chose a good attitude growing it. Now I love growing the company nine years later. You know what I mean? Like nine years later, I can tell you that I actually love my job and I love what it is that I do. I've always loved coaching people. I've always loved the industry I'm in, but I haven't always loved being an entrepreneur. 
And so you have to have that type of grit. Like when I posted something the other day that one of our clients took six years to like, I mean, she made money all the way through. It's not like she didn't make money, but she spent three years. It was three years. She's in her sixth year now. She spent three years <clears throat> um, not knowing what she was going to do. And she was making enough money, but not breakthrough money, right? Like she's making enough money, but not breakthrough money. And people wrote down, they wrote things like, um, oh my God, she, she did three years, like talk about determination. I'm like, no, no, that's actually what it takes. Like it's not determination. It's what it takes. Like the first year is like just getting the foundation underneath you. The second year is you start to figure it out a little bit more. The third year, you start to make some decent money right? The fourth year, it starts to take off. By the time you get to the eighth and ninth year, and think about this, just think about this for a second. If you think about people who manage your money, or people who are, let's say, teachers or any profession, like you don't really know what you're doing, like really know what you're doing till you start hitting the stride of the sixth, seventh, eighth year. Then you start to really know what you're doing in your career. Well, it's no different than entrepreneurship, right? As you're, as you're like, working through, you know, growing your company, you got to put on the hat and realize, okay, like this is going to be a journey. And am I up for the journey? And is it worth the risk? So for some people, they actually have a calling that they know they're supposed to be an entrepreneur. They know it. Like they're just like, it's in me. But then there's some people who are being entrepreneurs because they just think that it equals freedom, which it doesn't. It doesn't. You can create freedom in corporate America. I did. I created freedom in corporate America and I created freedom in entrepreneurship. But that's happening up here. How you develop your leadership, how you manage people, how you empower people, how you land with people, all of that. And the thick skin has to develop. Then there's people who are amazing entrepreneurs and are trying to be entrepreneurs. And they're like, it's just not really calling them. They're doing it for all the wrong reasons. So go inside and ask yourself, like, who are you? Like, were you called? Because here's what I know for sure. <coughs> were you called to lead a movement? Or were you, or are you supposed to be part of the team? And I could go either way. I'm going to be a leader in any aspect that I go in, right? I can, I'm actually like a chameleon. I could go either way, right? I've played great on teams and I've played great as an entrepreneur. But at the end of the way, you're not going to get, you're not going to get away from the cost. If you want to be a top performer in any element, you've got to be a top performer and stop complaining. You just have to. And so, so many people are missing their calling in life because they're still complaining and still debating what it is that they should do. Lead the crusade or get on the team and lead the crusade. But it's like, I don't know about you, but at the end of the day, you can't take the money with you and you can make a ton of wealth either way. You can write your own checks as an entrepreneur or as an entrepreneur. Just be fucking good. Be good. Be really good at what you do and you can write the checks. Make sure you're in alignment with whatever movement you're pushing and then go after it 100%. And then build your life out in a way that you have flex time, that you have, and you guys hear me talk about this all the time, but there is no secret. Everybody, as I've just heard so many bad understandings of entrepreneurship. I was with my stepdad the other day. He's an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur, like has created so many businesses crazy that I would say would be an entrepreneur, serial entrepreneur. Really, it's not about anything other than just continuing to create companies. And he's had a company for a really long time. And there as like, there's moments where they're in a mass cash flow and there's moments when they're a mass cash crunch and that's entrepreneurship. So do you want to wear the hat of the roller coaster? of entrepreneurship because that's what it is, right? Like there's some months that things are tight. You hope that you managed your money correctly and you have a couple million dollars in the bank, right? And you could do that. Uh, I, you literally can do that as an employee and a team player, a leader. You could do that as, actually, I'm going to rephrase that. You can't do that as an employee unless you have a really good invest, investment banker or a really good real estate deal. Um, or stock deal, but you can do it as a entrepreneur inside a company. Because when I was, when I was an entrepreneur, I ran my own division and you can, you can bet that I could write my own check. I a hundred percent. Every time I asked for what I wanted, I got it. And I never asked for it until after I proved myself. And so I would, I would work my ass off and I would create a result. And then I go, Oh my God, 
like I created this result and I would go back humbly and ask for a raise or some sort of profit sharing or whatever. Uh, the reason why I'm asking you this is because don't feel like you're pigeonholed into one aspect. I mean, I teach entrepreneurship and I'm right now like working on unenrolling you in entrepreneurship because you know what I'm tired of? I'm really tired of people complaining about the work. And if you're not, if you're not pulled to lead the movement, then get on a team that will alleviate some of the stress that entrepreneurship uh, brings forward. Does that make sense? Because if you're part of a big movement, you're still going to work your ass off, but you could be a part of something that allows you to wear one hat, which then is less stressful. It's just as much work, but it's less stressful. So you pick the avenue that you want to, that you want to run, but I'm going to tell you to just really go inside and make a decision because we need strong entrepreneurs pushing movements. And if you're an entrepreneur, you are a massive visionary. You are 100% okay with the ups and downs of the financial, the financials that happen. You feel the responsibility. Like I feel the responsibility of, of my team's families, I feel the responsibility of the people that I am supposed to serve before the recession hits and after the recession and through the recession. I feel the responsibility of continuing to up-level curriculum in one of my programs so that and hire trainers. I'm talking to trainers right now as I'm hiring additional trainers for our business side, not our leadership side. Um, I am helping other, you know, leadership programs get launched right now that are, have nothing to do with me. Um, meaning that I've got a big give in the world at the same time. Like, I mean, it just, it, it doesn't stop. So if you want it to stop, then you should assess on whether or not you're an entrepreneur because an entrepreneur wears the hat of massive leader of multiple different things and it doesn't stop. So if you need to rest, then I would say, look at your schedule, look behind you and look at your schedule and how's your schedule shaken out because if you don't have the energy to create the results that you want then that's going to break down for you so I know I kind of blabbed this morning on 7 a.m coffee with Shanda but I just felt like I needed to share it on my heart I just felt like I needed to share it with you because there's just so many people that are torturing themselves and you just don't need to torture yourself so now my little tushy is going to head to uh, lofty coffee and again, thank you for all the gifts that people have sent me to Lofty Coffee. You guys are all so sweet. And, um, and I'm going to be in the Coach Yourself to Success Facebook group at 10 this morning. And if you're not in that group, I will actually post in the comment section below. Uh, I do some pretty wicked trainings in Coach Yourself to Success that I don't do anywhere else. In fact, I recommend all my clients are in there as well. Not only engaging, but also seeing what it is that I'm doing because I'm doing training in there that I'm not doing anywhere else. And I'm trying to case study people to see if I can pop people in that group, whether or not they work with me or they don't work with me. So my eyes are, are whining. Anyway, you guys, so um, I'll see you tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. I've got one of my clients on tomorrow morning as well, uh, unpacking how she's used some of our systems and methodologies to create ridiculous results. So if you're a client of ours and you're wanting better results, then watch that um, tomorrow morning at 7 a.m. If you are new to me, then watch that because it's really good to know that the coach that you're listening to right now gets real results. All right. Talk to you soon. Bye.